What is a cancer? Cancer can only be diagnosed by looking at the tissue. Tissue means the skin, the lung, the nodule, the bump, the tumor. I can't look at someone and with confidence say, this is cancer, lung cancer, or breast cancer, or brain cancer. I must have a piece of that tissue that I can look at under a microscope. Because I'm going to then look under that microscope and say, aha, I took this from a woman's breast, and it has an appearance under a microscope of the kind of cells that would be in the breast. But you just as well may see, so take a, a biopsy tissue from a lung and say, is this lung cancer? But then look under the microscope and say, well, this lung cancer looks like it came from a breast. So we name the cancer based upon where it comes from and what its appearance is. Now, that's today. Tomorrow, the future is going to be naming the cancer for what its genes look like. So we can take a biopsy and look under the microscope and say it looks like one thing. But then I can look at the genes or the protein or the DNA and say, well, I've seen 100 breast cancers, but they don't all have the same profile. They don't have the same appearance under the microscope, which again is akin to a, um, an alien, a, a space person coming in and saying, aha, look, these are all people. They would be right. And then they would say, you know, some of these people, they have long hair, some have short hair, and the long-haired ones, they have a different behavior than the short-haired ones. Okay, now you might start to get to something. Then you might find a man with long hair who has behavior of the short hair, but if we classified them based on the looks, then we wouldn't be doing ourselves, a, we wouldn't be doing a good job. We have to begin classifying on the behavior. So I don't care what it looks like sometimes, I need to know how it behaves. You can't tell me that it's friendly if it's going to the liver and the lungs and the bones, no matter what the pathologist says about the appearance under a microscope. Cancer naming is complicated. This is a really important idea to try to get across in an introductory lecture. We name cancers for where they come from, okay? We name cancers after, for doctors based on Latin. And there's a whole host of words um, that all end in oma. So it's a carcinoma, an adenoma, a sarcoma. And it's not important as the patient to really know what the different omas are. And I've got listed here adenoma, chondroma, uh, hemangioma, hepatoma. What's important is that you're able to ask the doctor is this ca cancer from my breast or my lung or my colon, is it the typical one? Is it um, a, a common kind of cancer? What's the, you can ask, I, I'll describe. What's the flavor? You know, that's a good way to put it. Is it, is it a mean cancer or is it, and I know this doesn't make sense, but is it a, a, a friendly cancer? The idea of benign cancer is, is an oxymoron. It means a cancer but it's growing, but it's not in a place that could harm you and it doesn't invade. So naming cancers gets really important because we want to know where it came from and I want to know anything I can about its behavior. My, my favorite analogy on naming cancer, if you're born in Singapore and moved to France, would you be French? No. If you have breast cancer that goes to your bones, is that bone cancer? No, it's breast cancer that's gone to the bones. And all of us in medicine know that patients come in and they say, my auntie, she's got bone cancer. But bone cancer is actually pretty uncommon. So we know that they're talking about a cancer that started somewhere else and went to the bones. So to arm yourselves to talk to cancer patients or cancer doctors, think very specifically about, tell me where this cancer started and always use that naming to say it always started in the breast, but it's gone to all these different places, or it started in the breast, and I hope it's not in any of these other places. So again, these different types of cancers, any cell in the body can sort of go wrong on us and have that 
either DNA mistake or an exposure, or maybe we were born just a little bit more sensitive. The cancers could start, the common ones are called carcinomas. Things like lung cancer, breast cancer tend to be carcinomas. More uncommon, uh, less common, something like sarcoma, which comes from bone or muscle. Not a very common tumor, but enough that we have experts at the West Medical Group in, in the US who only take care of those kinds of cancer. Or leukemias and lymphomas, cancers of the blood and bone marrow, which is Dr. Mao's expertise from the Mayo Clinic. Some of the most common, breast, lung, prostate, liver, and colon. Those are really at the top when it comes to Singapore. The number three, the top three cancers for women in Singapore is breast cancer, colon cancer, and lung cancer. For men in Singapore, it's lung cancer, and colon cancer, and liver cancer, which is often associated with hepatitis, so an infection that can lead to getting cancer. Once you know where it came from, then we ask the question, which part of that organ? So we sometimes call it squamous cell, and that's cells that line skin or lining of an organ. Adeno, it comes from glandular tissue. It makes something. Um, transitional means bladder or basal cells, which are skin. And these are not critical points to learn tonight, but it's critical to understand what doctors are thinking so that you can effectively talk to doctors in the 15 minutes, the 30 minutes, or the hour that you get in the room, because you want to make the most of that time. Some of these rare tumors, the lymphomas and leukemias I explained, um, they get very complicated in terms of what the doctor needs to know, but I think it's important for you to know where they come from so we can teach you what to expect as we go forward. What would be signs of cancer? Everybody wants to know. You're 40 years old, you're 60 years old, and you, you have a lump uh, on your forearm, and you, you say, oh, I hope that's not cancer, or I, I've got a mole, and uh, is that cancer? The most important thing in asking about what is a sign of cancer is to know yourself, meaning everybody has lumps and bumps and moles and scars, and you have to know your body, and you have to be able to say, is this normal? Is, is what I have, have I had it a long time? The bump on my forearm, have I had it for years? Well, if you've had it for years, it's unlikely to be cancer. But a new mole, a black spot that wasn't there last month and is getting a little bit bigger, that's something that needs to be checked by a doctor who understands about the skin. Um, there are other signs as well, besides lumps and bumps. A cough in a smoker that doesn't go away is something that needs to be checked out. A lump in your breast that wasn't there the month before needs to be checked out. Normal is a funny word. In medical school, they ask everyone, how many times a day do you go to the bathroom? And do you go once? Raise your hand. Do you go twice? Raise your hand. Or the teacher will say, what is the normal number of times that you're supposed to go to a bathroom a day? And it's all over the map. Everyone has their own style. So normal's a spectrum. But if your normal changes and you're going differently than you went before, that's also a sign. Bleeding anywhere is a sign. And certainly unexplained weight loss. Everybody likes a little slimming, I know. But the reality is unintentional weight loss, weight loss without trying, is not a good sign. It's something that needs to be discussed with a doctor. 